And if we jump into the terminal, I'll kick us off with editor search and replace. Yeah, I'll admit that in some cases, these were things I'd never used in the past, but we decided to explore them anyway. So what I set up for my first search and replace is I created this example zone, which is just a DNS zone file. If you manage DNS, it's really easy to start with an example and then copy it to be your domain. We'll do a copy example zone to be called my domain as Scott's domain. Come. But when we look at the contents inside the file, it's still the same as the original template. We now need to update it to be my domain extension. And you can see that a bunch of different places throughout this document, there's example.com as the domain extension. So in VI, you could do search and replace using the following method. You use colon, that opens up the secondary command line for you. You give the range of lines that you want to operate your search and replace over. So I'm going to start at line one and dollar sign means the end of the file, the last line of the file. So from line one, the end of file, I'm going to substitute example.com dot for Scott's domain dot com dot. And then the last thing I'm going to do on here is I'm going to add in a G to do a global search and replace. Sometimes, depending on what search and replace mechanism you're using, your search and replacement could end on the first match on a line. So the G says I want to do it globally. So on that uh, start of authority record as an example, up there towards the top, see how there's two examples of example.com. I'm going to replace both of them because I'm doing the search and replace globally, all occurrences on all lines. That's the exact same thing I was about to mention. You don't have to do the one comma dollar. You could just do a percent. That'll do the whole file. You could, but I like using one comma dollar because I remember dollar sign means end of stuff and I use it in things all the time, like D dollar, delete to the end of the line or dollar sign, move to the end of the file, right? The last line or colon dollar. Is that, is that because the buck stops here? N no. The other thing I like about doing it this method is I can actually line constrain it. I use the same exact syntax. If I want to do lines 10 to 30, right? Yeah. I, I guess that's valid, right? And the fact that Vincent brought it up, I thought it was worth mentioning. Sure. But this is a death match after all. You get your chance to land a blow after I'm finished with mine, Nate. Come on. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to hit enter on this command. And you can see that all occurrences of example.com dot have been replaced with scottsdomain.com dot. So there you go. One comma dollar colon, one comma dollar S slash the search string slash replacement string slash G. And I'll do one more. Uh, maybe I don't have 10.0.1.2 as my IP address scheme. Maybe it's comma dollar 10 dot zero dot for 86 dot 32 dot. So now some searches treat the dot as a special character. I guess Vim does not. Otherwise it would, or maybe it does. And it just happened to match in this case. And you have to escape it if you want to be specific to it. We're going to go down the full on rabbit hole, honey. In regular expressions, dot has a special meaning or it'll match that character. If that character is a dot anyway. All right. What Nate is alluding to is that first search string. Right. And the one that I just typed, it's 86.32 dot. That's the search string that I'm looking for. That's actually not a literal string. That is a regular expression. Right. A period character is a single character wildcard. Right. So that's what I was getting at. And the reason it works here is because I don't have anything that's 86 something, 32 something. Other than IP addresses. If you had a number in there that was 865324, then it would match. All right. So colon one comma dollar. S substitute 86.32. Dot... You can right. see it already that it's highlighting it. Yeah. So that's because instead of literal dots, the dot means any wildcard character. And I happen to have another pattern in this file. It's 86 something, 32 something. And that matched my regular expression. Typically, you will not see goofy, weird names like this 
So it's generally pretty safe to do a search or replace for IP addresses using just like the regular IP address formatting. But yes, that search thing that you're looking for is a regular expression, which can cause weird matches if you don't have clean data. Yeah, if you put a backslash before each of those dots, I think it'll treat it as a dot. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that's a first search or replace in an editor. You can do a global search or replace on the secondary command line in VI. I gave you a couple of examples of how it works. And uh, then we talk some more about what you're putting in there.